course. Okay, so it's making me do up and down. How much does that bother people? Yes, I wanted to make sure you guys could hear me. Can everyone hear me? I don't wanna set up a new link. It's gonna make me set up a new link to switch the way um, it's oriented, which is frustrating. I prefer landscape. I can get to you guys. Let's see. Hello, thanks for tuning in for your first time. Let's see here. Because I have this set up to like people can click straight I don't want to make a new link so people can see but it's really bothering me that it's not taking up the whole space can you see okay hi from Germany it's fine okay thanks cookie nibs yeah, I'm here a little early. I don't know why it oriented this way. Perfect. This will work then, and I'll just make sure. Hello from Florida. Yeah. On if Who's watching from iPhone? I'm curious how many people watch from their iPhones. It might even be better for iPhone users. Great, good Beth, awesome. Hi Don, I'm glad you're back. We're making Italian macarons today and then someone just asked to do a French method tomorrow. I mean tomorrow, let's do tomorrow, no. French method next week, but using the Swiss, Swiss method, so French recipe Swiss method next week with a Nutella filling. Um, hello from Las Vegas. All right, everyone. Let's see, what time is it? One minute. I'll keep saying hello. iPhone, thank you guys for letting me know. Yeah, this might be nice for I, iPad. Okay, that's probably not the best layout. I'll do it this once because it turned out to be a vertical orientation, but um, I prefer horizontal just for the sake of people on their computers and the YouTube platform. Hi from Texas, Argentina, well hello, thanks. I don't need my step stool anymore. All right, let's see here. iPhone, iPhone, lots of people on their iPhones. Let's see. Okay, a lot of people then on their iPhones. Fudge brownies might be a fun thing to do in, a, in the future. You gotta get some really good chocolate and then you make your fudge brownies amazing. Hi from the UK, thank you for subscribing, I appreciate it. So we're making Italian macarons today. I first wanted to shout out and thank Priscilla, Dora, Lori, Yo-Yo Vaughn, Beth, Courtney, Lisa, Amy, Cookie Nibs, um, can't read. Terry, Susan, Sherry, and Pissy Poo. <laughs> Sounds, I think that's how you say your name. Um, for donating or um, doing super chats to the channel. 
I was able to purchase some fun ingredients so we can do a pistachio video soon. I know you guys have been wanting that. So I have, I got pistachios, a few of these to make, show you guys how I do pistachio paste. And then pistachio flour is still in, in route. I ordered it online. We got some pectin for pate fui. So fun ingredients that I wasn't able to purchase before you guys made it possible, so thank you. Can you make more macaron fillings? Yes, I'm. Tr that is what I want. Hi, Gail. I'm trying to make more. I used to sell my content at the farmer's markets and now it's kind of whatever I can muster up. So pistachio fillings are coming and then a pate fui, like a fruit, filling is coming as well so and I just need to find time to record and edit so we don't have to watch a two-hour video hi Bailey so okay uh, let's see here all right hi from California let's get started on this Italian method this is my second time doing it in this kitchen uh, it is not my go-to method they turned out well when I tried last week, but who knows what will happen today. So that's, what, that's what's fun about the lives. We've got, the Italian method is when you cook a sugar syrup on your stove to a certain temperature, and then you're pouring it into your egg whites. Whereas the French method, we just put the sugar in its raw form in our egg whites, and then Swiss method, we heated up our egg whites and our sugar Oh, thank you, Terry. Thank you again. Thanks for being you. <laughs> That's so cute. These stickers are fun. Um, so Swiss method was heating it up on the stovetop. So now, oh, I hope you get a better connection. Hello from Hungary. Dora, thank you. Now we're doing the, the scarier version, but it's more stable and bakeries will use this for their large production and it's more consistent. If you're having trouble with the French method or Swiss method, this might be your go-to. So let's try this out. Let's see what we get today. If you're baking along, we've got 37.5 or 38 grams of water in our sauce pot. I just have a regular pan. It's not stainless steel or anything. Um, if you have a, a little scale that does specific measurements, you can do 37.5 for the water, but I just did 38 for this. But along with that, if you have a, a scale, hello from Luxembourg, a scale that does little things, I did measure out 1.5 grams of egg white powder to add to this. I have egg white powder, totally fine, just omit it. If you do 1.5 to 2 grams will be perfectly fine if you don't have a really precise uh, to the Okay, with that being said, we've got our 38 grams of water, our 150 grams of sugar. Yes, the recipe is in the description of the video. 150 grams of water. We're going to pour carefully in this pot to not get the water on the sides of the pot. So we're just pouring gently. Venezuela, hello. Yes, for pistachio, I know. I've been hoarding that recipe. So I'm excited to share with you guys and finally get you, it's more of a, I feel like it's very French filling and it, I love non buttercream filling. So this will be a good one. Samsung, what did they say about Samsung? Yeah, someone said they found the Swiss method less intimidating, and I think so too. I mean, you don't have to actually worry about temperature really with the Swiss method. I mean, we did take it to a certain degree, but it's not like you are pouring this hot sugar syrup like we're gonna do right here. So I can see how this is intimidating, but once you get it down, it's honestly just another step in in the macaron process that you might love that it doesn't it's, it won't phase you at all okay rhode island hello so we've got the water in our pot if you see it's not all moist so i'm going to get a fork 
Um, you can try to reduce sugar um, and just take away a little bit of confectioner sugar and add more almond flour and see if just a little bit at a time and see how far you can push it. So we've got our sugar moistened. Now with this, Susan, thank you so much. I appreciate it. This is fun for me guys, so I thank you. We've got our egg white powder here. Now if you wanted to, you can take a little of that sugar before you put it into this water and mix it with this and it will help the, it not clump in the egg whites, but I forgot to because I was talking to you guys. So I'm just gonna put the egg whites directly into the egg white powder, directly into my fresh egg whites. I've got 54 grams of fresh egg whites in this stand mixer with the whip attachment. So we've got room temperature, and I'm gonna put our 1.5, or if you did two grams, that's fine, of almond, um, almond of egg white powder in here. It's gonna clump. That's the name of the game uh, with egg white powder, but you don't have to worry. Even if your meringue, I'll see a little bit of clumps in my meringue. Uh, it's not the sugar syrup, it's the egg white powder, and it totally, you can't tell in your final product. I prefer the French method. It's fastest and I'm comfortable with it. So that's what my preference. But right now, the Swiss method I actually loved. I've only done Italian once here and it turned out well, but we'll see how it goes today. I just like, I have to do them a few times to really know if I wanna switch up my game, my macaron game. Okay, so we can move on. We've got our egg whites ready. We've got our sugar syrup ready. Vegan macarons. Yeah, I have never tried vegan macs, but if you head over to Pie, Pies and Taco, um, her YouTube channel has vegan macarons and she makes beautiful vegan ones. I have yet to try the aquafaba, but I want to. India, hello from India. Okay, so I'm going to turn my stove on really low for right now. It's, it's gonna be at low, the lowest possible thing. Um, you need a digital thermometer for this, and we're gonna take it to 120 Celsius or 248 Fahrenheit. Now this is different from my previous, um, when I was doing my trials and I did a video of this in my channel, I did a different recipe and I took it to 118 Celsius to 40 Fahrenheit. So I found that the, the 120, the two extra degrees in Celsius helped my macarons. So we're gonna go to 120 today. And when your temperature comes up, when you have your sugar syrup come up to the correct temp, you don't need to freak out. Um, I always am like, well, it's 120 in one spot, so I have to go before it burns, right? Sometimes it's 120 on the side, but not in the middle. Just take your time and breathe through it. Oh my gosh. Okay, let me see. Can you hear me now? Hello? No sound. Yes, you can hear me? Yay! Okay. Whew, guys, that scared me so badly. Let me get this back on. This phone, I tell you guys, I have an Apple appointment. It's so hard to get an appointment at the Apple store. No sound, yay, or yes? Um, yet. Oh, okay. Sorry, guys. Oh, Beth, you are so kind. Thank you, Beth. Let me try to get this, guys. Now my bajibra jabber isn't working. One sec. 
Mom was calling me, so it's it went off my phone. Sorry. Oh my goodness, y'all. There we go. Okay, are we all good? Let me see if I can set this back up. Or you guys can see me. Good thing I didn't start the mixer yet. Okay, now I can't get it at a good spot where my Jovi doesn't fall down. Cool, cool, cool. Ugh, y'all. Yay, you can hear again. Good sound, but now my phone isn't staying up. I just wanted one live without crazy, crazy issues. Okay guys, phew, let's see. They don't do them on Monday. What, I didn't, take care of your syrup, yep. <laughs> okay, good, Woo. now I'm sweating. Um, the syrup was on super low, so it's not doing anything right now, it's just dissolving the sugar. So we're good, I'm gonna move my mixer over and I'm going to show you guys the paste real fast. How many Celsius? So we're gonna take the sugar syrup to 120 Celsius. Get a clean bowl. What do we wanna do today color-wise? Um, sapphire sky, so a blue or a green, emerald. You guys tell me what you want. What was first? Blues first. Okay. Blue it is. Okay, so we're putting our 150 grams of confectioner sugar, 150 grams of almond flour. I already sifted it and mixed it together so it's homogenous. Then we're pouring our 55 grams of egg whites into our confectioner sugar and almond flour. And we're gonna mix this together to make a paste. I'm gonna turn this bad boy up a little bit and just kind of run my, make sure there's no sugar that's just sit, sitting on the bottom of my pan and not getting moistened. So I'm gonna turn it up to a three and let it do its job and kind of dissolve the sugars and then we'll bring it up to a boil. Yes, hello. We are, when I get my sugar to temp, hmm, Zoe, I wonder if your, your sugar, your thermometer is off maybe? Okay, so we're making our paste. Um, sometimes I'll get my bowl scraper too. And then kind of just make sure I keep taking stuff off my spatula when it all kind of gets on there. Thank you, cookie nibs. Thank you so much. I'll kind of rub it off like this. And um, I will, I'll read through these after. I feel like I'm getting because this isn't my preferred method. I'm not as comfortable with it. I'm having trouble reading your guys' comments right now, but I'll, I'll get to them when these are baking. So we're just making a paste. Nothing scary about this part. One of the restaurants I worked at, or bakeries, they were very meticulous about their macarons and they would cover the paste with saran wrap while they did their, their sugar syrups. They didn't want any moisture leaving the paste. 
Um, I feel like when you're doing less production, that doesn't matter as much. But if you are starting your own big bakery and you have all this prep set up for you um, and you're doing multiple batches at once, you might want to put saran wrap right over the paste if it's sitting out for a while. The comments with prices, um, people are just donating to the channel to help keep the ingredients up so I can keep doing lives. Um, so we chose blue, sapphire sky. So this is the sugar art. And it gets really messy if you drop this. So keep it over your bowl. Powdered colors are amazing. I like Chef Rubber as well. Um, that's another brand. You don't need a ton. I'm gonna do about a eighth of a teaspoon. That's even a lot. But this is a bigger batch than I have been making, so. I don't recommend going too much smaller on the egg whites in the mixer. 55 is about where I cut it off. Uh, you, and I wouldn't use a hand mixer with Italian macarons. So we've got our blue powder in here and I'm just gonna mix. Thank you, Amar. I really appreciate that. See how it's kind of coming in. So our sugar syrup, I've been babying it. It's really, really, you can go faster than this, but I'm just trying to have time to talk with you guys. Um, sugar's trying to melt. You don't want any sugar on the sides. It's all kind of sandy, so I'm gonna turn it up a little bit more. Okay, and get it moving. So here we go. I'm getting that blue incorporated into the paste. How many drops for food color um, for a gel paste? I would, for this big of a batch, you could do about four. Um, that's conservative, you could do more probably, uh, but four would be sufficient for a nice color. And I would put the gel paste in your meringue after you're done whipping. And then with the, with the um, powder colors, they're nice for the paste. Just make sure it's fully and nicely incorporated. 217. Powdered color is great um, for Italian macarons, especially because you can color the paste and you're not adding extra um, liquids or moistness. So we're getting a bubble. Just wanna make sure my sugar syrup is not crystallizing. We're going, you're getting to a boil is what I'm trying to say. My gas stove tends to get hotter on one side. So I'm gonna move, move my pan around a little bit to make sure it's even. Okay, so this is good. Um, but somebody did ask about colors. Powdered colors and gel colors are great. You just wanna get a color that is gel paste, not liquid, uh, or oil based. So like the ones at the grocery store that are super liquidy, those aren't the best because you're adding so much liquid. And then oil based, like for uh, coloring chocolate, they're gonna ruin your meringue. So recommend some of my favorite brands of coloring are AmeriColor, gel, gel color, Chef Master, gel colors, Chef Rubber powdered colors, and the Sugar Art powdered colors. All right. Got a little something in there. Let's see here. Do you use any brown coloring with your chocolate? Jean asked if I use any brown coloring with my chocolate macarons. And I do. Uh, sometimes I don't, sometimes I do, depends on the flavor. Sometimes I'll do no chocolate and make that, um, no brown and make that a chocolate flavor. And then I'll do a brown and have a deeper brown color and make that look um, for a chocolate caramel. Like I'll distinguish between my flavors when I have big production by doing a little bit of both, if that makes sense. So. Um, 
Should I let my Italian macarons sit? This is a great question. I didn't last time I made them here. I popped them right into the oven and it worked out great. We will see today. I had always rested my macarons and thought it was bollocks that um, some people said you could put them straight in, but it works for this recipe and it is in my notes too from pastry school for our Italian method macarons. In pastry school, we did not rest, but we did for our French method. Hello from the Philippines. Okay, so once you get to about 106, 104, 106, start mixing your mixer. Sorry for the noise. mix our mixer. If you have that egg white powder in, you might need to kind of break it up with your whisk by your, on your own. I'm turning it up to a four, uh, four and a half, medium high. I still have sugars that aren't dissolved yet, so let's see if I make a sugar crystal syrup. Our egg whites aged. These are just a day though. I don't know how much moisture really leaves the day. Just over 24 hours. I'm on a four right now just to get frothy. You want your egg whites to, you can definitely use cream of tartar. It's a different, it works differently, which I'll tell you when the mixer's not on. But it is something that stabilizes your meringue, so that's a good, good thing. We're at 115, 116 Celsius. I feel like I was saying something else. But what we want with our egg whites is we want frothy, volume, um, not almost at soft heat. So again, this temperature is 120 that we're taking it to. Can you see here? 120 Celsius or 248 Fahrenheit. I also got one of these point and shoot ones. Oh good, I'm glad. I tried, I got one of these after our last live talking about it. So we'll see if it works. I don't trust it yet. It says it's hotter than my other one, so that freaks me out. So my sugar syrup is at 119, 120, it's at 120 and I moved it around and it was 120 in lots of places. So now I'm frothy, I wish I could show you guys inside, but I have to get going. I'm turning up to eight and I'm pouring my sugar syrup in. You just kind of want to run it down the side of the bowl. With this, the shape of these mixers, you can't miss the side of the bowl. If you try not to get the side of the bowl, it'll hit the whisk and then you'll have sugar syrup in your eye. If you have a, a different mixer, you can try to aim for just the bowl. And, and not get some of your sugar syrup lost on the side, but this is fine. Let me get you guys in, in there. I'm shaking. That's not working very well. But I'm gonna turn it down now to about a six. And I'm gonna let it whip till it's 40 Celsius or 104 Fahrenheit. So 
so we're in between a six and an eight. We want a medium peak. We don't want a stiff peak for the Italian method. egg whites I use, I get access a lot, so just to show you. It's just like albumin, um, pure egg whites, dry. Thank you, Sylvia. Thank you so much. You guys, we're going to be able to do a lot of fillings. Can I substitute cocoa powder for a powdered sugar? Yeah, Megan, I usually take out both almond flour, equal amounts of almond flour and confectioner sugar, and put in the cocoa powder. Thank you, Dora. Hi, Kevin. Okay, guys. Let me see where my thermometer is. So, this is where I would go wrong a lot when I was revisiting the Italian method after years of not. I was trying to get it to a stiff peak, but that's not necessary. Let's check out where the temperature's at. Let's see. Sorry. Okay. Somebody was calling me again. So this says I'm at 40 Celsius. Let's check with my thermometer. Let's do this fast because you don't want to just let this sit. But I'm going to put my thermometer in and see where I'm at. This says 40 as well. I don't know if it'll still say 40. Okay, so look at this. It is not a stiff peak. It's at a medium. We're going to start macronaging. Okay, so what I was taught in pastry school is to put this piece in, sacrifice the first little bit. Sorry guys, it, the space is so small with, I'm gonna get a little bit more to sacrifice. Get a clean one so you don't ruin your meringue. Oops, made a mess. And I'm gonna keep whipping this while I do my sacrificial first addition. Whip on low and that will keep it inflated. Sorry. Okay, so we've got this. And we're going to just incorporate the first one. You don't need to keep the volume on this one. Sorry about my hands. Um, so just kind of go for it. Put it in, mix it in evenly. And then we'll be more careful with our next editions of the meringue. So we're kind of just lightening up. These are two way different consistencies. We're slowly lightening up the paste to be more like the meringue and airy and it will be easier to kind of combine them now with this first edition. I'm trying to make sure I don't have any more white streaks like this. That's the good thing about having colors. It's more in your face when you realize that you haven't mixed in evenly. Okay. So now I'm gonna stop the mixer and put in my second and third editions. Okay. A 
At this point, it'll go a little bit faster, so I'm not gonna keep it whipping. Try to get what you can without taking too much time. Oops, I got it in my hair. They're not rising. Um, your oven temperature could be too low. The meringue might have not been strong enough. Or maybe your, if you're doing Italian method, maybe you needed to rest yours. So we're getting it all in. Oops, I was supposed to do two additions. This is when doing the live, sometimes I get a little, I, I forget what I'm doing. With the, with the other method, I put it all in. We can, we can do with this though. The major question I wanna know is how do you make macarons without resting them? Let's see if it works today. But this recipe is how, what it calls for. Okay, so here we go. I put it all in accidentally, but we're gonna be okay. I'm just right now mixing without deflating. So you try to keep the air right now. I recommend doing this in a few, a few steps. One second, someone just knocked on my door. So we're donating our car today, and I forgot to make my signature on the title, so he's gonna bring it over here, and I can sign the title. So, my apologies, but we're mixing. Right now, I'm still not deflating. I don't wanna see these white streaks right now. Clean off your spatula every once in a while as well. Some people get in there with like one of these, bowl scraper. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go sign that title real fast. Sorry about that. Okay, hopefully that's okay. <sighs> Bye to my car. Okay, so now that we have it evenly distributed, we're going to start deflating purposefully. You push down, and it's the same as what I do with the French method, around and over, down, around and over. Okay until we get to that nice flowing consistency. How's everyone else's doing that are, I'm, this is like a theme, I'm sweating profusely on all the lives. At this point, because these Italian macarons do not rest, I will turn on my oven. However, I don't want it to get hotter in here. <laughs> Hard working, yeah. Doing some multitasking. My apologies, you guys. Okay, let's see where we're at. It's flowing continuously. Ribbon stage. I'm watching the batter right now. I'm seeing if this kind of sinks into itself. So when I pipe it, if I know it's going to lay flat, I can't. Oh, thanks for letting me know. Is that good? So, if I am mixing, I mean, if I'm letting it flow, it's, it's flowing consistently, it's not breaking. And then you can just, 
kind of sit and watch the bowl and see if it melds into it itself, the batter. And then um, you're ready to pipe. So I like to go a little bit under with Italian. So if I have a tiny bit of tail left, I'm okay with that. It flattened for the most part. And I think we're pretty good. So let me just show one more time for the sake of showing and for my own benefit. Well, now it broke, right? Of course. Let's see. I have too big. There we go. Let's go with it before I mix too much. All right. We are filling piping bag with an 11, no, a nine millimeter tip. I think that's about equivalent to a 12 Wilton. So a nine millimeter tip. My hand is filthy. So I tried this last time with three different types of surfaces to bake on. I tend to get a lot of lopsided with silicone mats when I'm doing Italian method, at least in my previous, in my previous oven. Three hundred Fahrenheit. So I wanted to try one batch on the silicone just to see if I can get the beautiful circles I love. So I did that and I did, but it wasn't as full. I do not have a convection. I just have plain old um, gas conventional oven. So I tried parchment. I mean, I tried silicone mat on an air bake tray. And because of air bake trays are insulated on the bottom, and then I also added the silicone mat, it's like a double negative. It's not very good at conducting heat. So they weren't very full. So I'm gonna try my French steel pan, and I'm gonna pipe these bad boys on that. So my French steel pan's a little better at conducting heat, and then the silicone mat isn't. So we're gonna see if that helps get full macarons Hopefully not cracked macarons after I put these in without resting. All right, so when I'm piping straight down 90 degree angle, straight down 90 degree angle, I push with my dominant hand on the top, flick with the wrist at the bottom. Can you guys see? This is when I wish Wesley were here. So I'm gonna do a few on here. So these French steel pans, I've noticed um, I, I can't get the bigger size that to fit my inside my oven but and then they have a tiny little lip so I can't pipe right on the corner because it will be lopsided so I'll just do the middles but I love how they conduct heat well the feet usually look really nice oops I did one on the side um, I'm so sporadic so see how it's kind of falling on itself. I don't really have a big tail. So we piped well, but we'll see if I went a little too far. So here we go. I'm gonna kind of, the max I usually go for are one and three quarters of an inch to two inches. Now, if you guys are picky, you can get a scribe or a toothpick and kind of pop your air bubbles. You know, I don't do that, even though it bothers me. I'm just a, a lazy perfectionist, maybe? I don't know. Okay. We'll let that pan sit. And now we're gonna try Teflon. So last time I tried Teflon with my sheet trays doubled and upright. If you guys watch this channel a lot, you know I usually pipe like this but I love the way you can use a pan the way it's supposed to. I like having the lip up if it's possible. So I'm gonna try Teflon on just one sheet tray. 
and see if my oven cracks or how it works. I'm learning about my oven. If you know your oven cannot take the lip, then put it on the back side of your tray. Hi, Jaslyn. Um, but I'm gonna try, and then with this, I just kind of, the Teflon tends to move around just like parchment. You just kind of dollop a little bit of your macaron batter, put it down on your sheet tray, and then I don't have a template, so I'm just gonna count one, two, three, even pressure, stop pressing, and move on. One, two, three. One, two, three. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. One, two, three. Already some are bigger than the others, I can tell. I was so flustered when the guy came. I thought I had everything ready for the title and I forgot to sign it. And then I forgot my mask too when I was talking to him. I feel so embarrassed. Oh, this is me all flustered. So these are definitely smaller than I usually do. Let me get a little bit of Okay, so then I'm gonna pound this guy. You know what I mean, like tap it out. And now we're going to do parchment too. Parchment is a great conductor, so I'm going to double sheet tray. Um, I get I used to do this in my old kitchen. I would always double up my sheet trays when I was making macarons because it makes your macarons rise up evenly and have a nice foot because one of my main things is having lopsided max when I do the Italian method. Um, French method, not as frequently, but I'll have full trays maybe today of lopsided macarons and it's killer. So. I just don't feel like a regular gas oven does as well with the with the Italian method. So these are not dry. They are wet and it kills me, but I'm going to put them in the oven and we're going to see how we do. Okay? I set it for so I'm at 300 Fahrenheit. I'm dropping it to 290. Two ninety, and then I'm putting eight minutes on the clock. I'll flip it around and then put seven to eight more minutes on it. So here's our parchment. I don't have too much batter left. I didn't cut the parchment well. You want to make sure, unlike me, it's nice and flat to start with because parchment will already wrinkle up. Oh, I have more batter in here, that's why. I was being so stingy with my batter on each tray because I thought I was done. Okay. So parchment usually yields my foolish shells. Um, if you care fully about, if that's your priority, full shells, I really recommend either Teflon or parchment. If you, prefer having a nice round circle, then silicone mat might be your your winning combination. I don't know what I'm saying. Your winner, let's see. Um, but yeah, I'm, ha I'm so far behind on you guys' comments. For some reason they stopped coming up on my screen so I can't even see them. But I will look after I pipe. So kind of get all this out. Don't make as much of a mess as me. I might need a fourth sheet tray, guys. Okay. Here we go. More parchment, double sheet tray. We'll see what works best, what doesn't, and then go from there.
I leave a lot of room for airflow because gas ovens usually don't bake up nicely when they're too close together or there's too many on a tray. This color is fantastic. All right, I'm gonna need a fourth tray, that's unfortunate. Sorry guys, it's louder when you have a double. I'll do this. So, I guess I could pipe more. I'll just get another tray. So this one has like a little nice lump in it. I'm gonna get my scribe and just get it out a little bit. So scribe, just kind of, if you're, if you're into making cookies with royal icing, it's kind of like that when you're just smoothing out the royal icing. I don't find it therapeutic. I really, for some reason, have like an aversion to doing this. Okay, friends, one more tray and I'm going to read what you guys have been saying and we can get to questions if you want to just repeat yourself so I don't go back up, whatever you feel like. And we will move on. Should we do more parchment? or Teflon, oh wait, I don't have any more Teflon that I like. Parchment or silicone mats. We can do one on an air bake tray and, or we could do silicone. Okay, let's do silicone. Just picking the first one, this is my blueprint one. In case those ones don't work with the lip, I'm gonna do it on the back of my tray like I usually do with my French method. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. Dun, dun. You see my thumb? It looks real good. How often can you use Teflon sheets? I reuse mine a lot. Um, and it is very nice. I'm trying to think. I like that it's thin and supposedly conducts heat better than silicone mats and it holds shape better than parchment, but it still it spreads more than say your silicone mat. It's kind of a good combination. This, I don't love how this mat has them not, how they have them situated and not, um, like, do do. I don't know. I don't love that they're all taped side by side, but I don't usually have an issue with it, so we'll see. I'm nervous to look in the oven. Don't pipe as easy as you do. I don't pipe. Oh, I, I feel like I'm going very slow too, but. Um, it definitely takes practice and then once you get the, the feel of your batter and the consist once you're consistent with making your batter, it gets easy to predict how it's going to spread. But when, when you're trying new methods all the time, it's hard to really have the feel of how it's going to spread. So give yourself grace. I have completely different sizes on my last one. Digital thermometer. I can show it to you guys. I am taking out a couple of these big lumps. I know some people that keep the batter in the piping bag and if they have issues with resting for too long. 
they will keep the batter in the piping bag and then pipe right before it goes in once their other tray is out. I have not tried that method, but if you tend to have issues with macarons resting for too long, you could try that. Okay, we've got all of our beautiful macarons resting over there, different trays, different piping, uh, different baking mats. Let me see if I can say words. I don't wanna turn on my sink because they're all resting near my sink. But I will answer questions. Yes, so my oven was at my oven was at 300 to start and then I drop it to 290 only to regulate my internal oven and keep that around 290 to 300. If I, I tend to, my gas ovens have tended to rise up as soon as I put a sheet tray in, it will, the pilot turns on and it tries to compensate for that air lost and the colder sheet tray going in. So I want to stop that. I don't want it to shoot up to 320. So I put my oven temp down when I put my sheet tray in and I just leave it there. I, I don't re-raise it up to 300 when I put my next tray in or anything like that. Thermopen, yes, that's what I have. Thermopen. There we go. So here we go. I'm gonna bring you guys over Sorry about the weird angle, but you guys want to see it when I see it first, right? So let's check it out. What do you guys think? Cracks? Oh, oh, they're awful. They're all lopsided. And they're cracked. Okay. I'm going to set it for seven more minutes. Now, so with this, it could be the silicone. Um, I've already done this without resting, so I don't think it's the resting method. I don't think it's that it's resting. I think that it could be the sheet tray, the silicone, and the, what is this called? The sheet tray mixed together, and it's just getting too much, too much heat. I need to check my oven temperature, but my thermometer moved down. Um, so I don't know if my temp raised or not. So let me just double check my oven temperature inside and I can turn it down a little bit if it's high. You pipe them all onto your mats five minutes before one. Yes, so Veronica does that. You, you wait to pipe each one, right? Let's see. I'm gonna check my oven temp. So my oven does say it raised up to 350, so that's unfortunate. Um, well, we will lower it down and then put the second tray in. I might just put the second tray in on top. I know, right? It's always a bummer. But hey, it's not too humid out. I mean, it is fairly humid in here. I'm sweating because of the lights and the stove. But let me turn the fan on maybe. but I don't think it's humidity. I think it is straight up my oven temperature rising up. Like I was saying, I try to keep that from happening by turning my oven down, but it did not work today for some reason. So I'm gonna move this tray to the bottom rack, put a second tray in just because I'm anxious to see if this will happen for all of them. Okay, so we've got the Teflon in now. Now I can focus and read questions.
Yeah, the French re the French recipe does work nicely. Um, however, this method worked a few days ago, so it makes me sad. Let's see if we can get some wins on some of our baking surfaces today. You had the first crack, you had your first cracks done. Yeah, it's not fun to see those cracks. Your oven can definitely play a role in that. It's just sad. Is spacing important? Um, Trang, I think so. I feel as though if you put things too close together, as soon as those release a little bit of humidity and steam as they bake off, you can cause issues with cracking if you're too close together. I had an oven where I'd have to vent it because of issues with that. It was just too much steam if I put too much on a tray and they would all crack. Yeah, Lourdes, I hear you. Uh, it's frustrating when your oven doesn't read in the internal temperature as what you put it at. Uh, hopefully you get that figured out. It's just, it sounds like you have a internal thermometer and that's the most important thing so you can keep an eye out on that. I used your way earlier on the Italian method. They're all lopsided. Um, my question, Danica, did you use silicone mats? Hi, Lourdes. Hola. I overbake, underbake. Um, Macy asked that on silicone mats, they're always hollow, it sounds like, and it may be not the right fit for your oven. Uh, if you have just like a little gap, then I think you're probably fine. It will fill up as soon as you fill it and mature it, but let me vent this real fast. Um, but if you really, if it really bothers you with silicone mats, I would suggest trying Teflon or parchment um, and going from there. If you undermix a tiny bit when you're using parchment, it will hold its shape better. And that's kind of a trick. So it doesn't, they don't get all uh, oblong shaped and egg shaped. For someone said, let's see, next week live, we're doing, someone just asked in the beginning of the, the chat actually, next week live, we're doing French recipe, but with the Swiss method and see if that works. And then we're gonna do a Nutella filling. Is it possible to recalibrate your oven? You know what, Lori, I'm not sure. I would definitely call an oven specialist. I bet they can do something. I had to get a new ignition lighter in my old oven and I had someone come out for that because it was just igniting for too long and you could smell the gas just like letting out so it's not safe um, but there could be some type of internal issue too if it's not regulating well that you could if it's under warranty hopefully not even have to pay for and get it checked out Allison that's a great question Allison asked if it's easier for a top for beginners to do Italian or French method. And I'm gonna be super annoying and say it really depends. Um, I feel like Italian method is more of a sure win, even though we're not seeing that with me. Uh, it is easier to over mix. I mean, it's not as easy to over mix your batter. Whereas French method, you can over mix way faster and um, it's just not as forgiving. However, if you don't have a convection oven, here's my caveat, I feel like Italian method is difficult to get it figured out in your oven and that is where things can go wrong is the baking part, but you might have the actual process beautiful. So it really depends on what you've got your equipment. Um, I prefer French, 
that's just my go-to but um italian does have a lot of benefits as well if you live in a humid environment especially since um since you don't have to rest them however that being said swiss method seemed really nice too because you didn't have to rest them so that might be good for another humid environment okay sorry i went off on a tangent let me French is more delicate. That's a great way. Do I slam my pans on the counter? I don't. Um, it makes too much noise. I'm usually baking at night, so I feel like um, I've just learned to tap the bottom of my trays, and that's what I do. Yes, so I did eight minutes, flipped my tray, and put another eight minutes on. However, I switched the timer for my other macarons the next tray so let me check on those first ugly tray and check it out this second tray the teflon is way better no cracks the feet are rising, so we've got that at least to, to celebrate. <laughs> we can do a happy dance. Not quite yet, but we will do a happy dance, hopefully, if the other ones turn out. Ooh, cookie nibs, that's awesome. You found something that really keeps your French meringue sturdy. Advice for people that want to start their own baking business, advertising, pricing. Um, great question. I feel like advertising is something I never wanted to spend money on. I was very reluctant to pay someone to or to like have a sponsored post on Instagram or Facebook but I actually did do some of those on Instagram I did a couple sponsored posts and it you can direct you can figure out and direct your audience um, pick out your audience targeted there we go that's the word I'm looking for you can have it targeted to an audience that's local and that really did help up my sales also getting out to a farmer's market or somewhere that you just have traffic foot traffic is huge or doing pop-ups outside of a shop that asks you to um, foot traffic is a main thing just to get your name out there word of mouth and advertising on instagram if you feel like you get sales from instagram like i i did most of my private sales or my personalized sales from instagram <sighs> capitalizing on that and doing a sponsored post does help um i have a friend that works at facebook so she gave me some of her credits and we tried it out and um i got some light i was gonna say lifelong but i moved so i got some customers that were there for the long haul they would always order from me so advertising wise um and for pricing i do recommend pricing out your sheet um, doing a price sheet, pricing per unit, what you're making. Um, so each macaron, I had the list of how much it would cost to make. And then you want to make sure that you are increasing that profit enough to pay you per hourly what you want to be paid. And a um, with, so hourly what you want to be paid and also making for the ingredients my goodness so pricing per unit and then increasing that 50 percent or so to make it worth your money because it seems like oh i have a home bakery business i don't have that much overhead but watch that electricity bill go up watch that water bill go up it is a ton and you can write all these things off um, in your taxes so that's nice but it still raises your overhead um, and it, it can get expensive. Your failed attempts, you know, you have to throw away and think about that. What goes in the trash, you're still paying for. So make sure you're paying for all of it 
with your prices. Okay, let's see here. So you guys are having, the mic is going in and out. Uh, I'm sorry. Just a tiny bit. My, I tell you, I think my mic is still broken. That must be frustrating. I apologize for the mic. So, I didn't even bake these fully. The first tray, not good, guys. No bueno, um, they're all lopsided. Nothing turned out on the silicone mat. The Teflon looks good. I'll show you guys in the oven. Here are these bad, bad boys. Teflon looks great, right? Um, I didn't want to open the oven for too long. The Teflon is on a single sheet tray and it's doing okay right now. Let's see here. My Macs are always underbaked, but the tops are brown. You could do low and slow if you haven't tried already. Getting so many calls today. Oh, Pat, it, I tell you guys all the time, it happens. I'm trying to turn off this dang fan. Okay, maybe turning the fan off will help my mic. I don't know. Can you guys hear me okay right now? Hi. Yes, okay, so you guys can hear me okay. Um, perfect. I forget what I was saying, so if someone wants to <laughs> tell me. <laughs> Tall feet, few cracks. Yeah, hopefully the lowering of the heat will help. Um, these bad boys are just ugly. Completely too high in temperature. The insides are pretty nice. If you can see that, it's not focusing. There is that gap, but they still have a ton of meat in there. So, um, let me reset my, yeah, gap, but pretty full. Okay, so eight minutes, eight minutes. I've lost track of where my minutes were, but I am going to move my Teflon down and add another tray into my oven since this is, we wanna not take forever to bake all of them so you guys can see. It does make it longer to bake my max by about three to four minutes when I do two trays in at once. In goes parchment, double sheet tray. We're still at 300 degrees. Alexa, set a eight minute timer. Eight minutes, starting now. Sorry if I put off your guys' Alexa. Oh, interesting. Trang, when you under bake, you can put in the freezer and it helps bake it? Sorry, I don't know that. I'm not talking to you, Alexa. Um, she butts in all the time. Okay. I am sad about mm. these. These guys. Mmm. Yes, it helps them peel off for sure. And then I'll pop 
them in the freezer and it helps release from the silicone mat. Um, that's what I was saying. Someone was saying their shell's brown on the top, but they're not cooked all the way. Your oven might be running too, too hot. Um, I would recommend low and slow for your oven between 290 and 300 Fahrenheit and then going from there. If the internal temperature is any higher than that, they could brown because it takes a while to bake macarons if it's not like a convection oven which cooks faster. <laughs> Sylvia, your Alexa listens to me. I think it's quite funny. Why it didn't rest? Um, you asking why I didn't rest the macaron shells? Don asked if I made my husband, Wesley, it's his birthday today, a cake. I did not, he's not a sweet guy, but I do want to make a pativier, which is puff pastry or like a king's cake, I think is another word for it. It's puff pastry and inside is frangipan and it's like almond cream and pastry cream mixed together. It's so good. It's not too sweet. The flaky, buttery dough and then a little bit of that almond cream. So good. So that's my goal is sometime in August to make that for him. But it's been a busy weekend. Yes, frangipan is my favorite. It's so good. Okay, how do you achieve white max temperature gel color? Team K Show asked how I get white macarons and the way that I do white max is that I will use chef rubber powdered color. I'll go grab it and show you. But like I used the sugar art powdered color during the, the uh, for the blue, I will use chef rubber white color and it's basically titanium dioxide. And I will use that to color it and then I bake same temperature, usually same time or a little bit under one minute, like I said before, and I'll pop it in the freezer if it's a little under baked and then it will release from the, the parchment or silicone mat is what I use. However, if you're still brown, you could try putting parchment over your, your tray at the very end of baking, so you have five more minutes of baking, your feet are already developed, put a, lay a piece of parchment over it so it doesn't brown your macarons. Uh, make sure you do this though once the, the top has fully formed, like this, you wanna have that top formed and you don't wanna put parchment obviously when it's still wet in the oven and, then, and not hardened. So that makes, I, I go on too long for these questions, I'm sorry. Ooh, a pear and almond tart. My first, my first ever class, because I started this whole business doing classes, was I had people over in my home and I showed how to make a beautiful, you know, you um, poach your pears in um, wine and different spices and then cut them up nicely and make a, a pear tart. And that was, it's one of my favorite things. It's my, one of my first posts on Instagram. My husband is doing, yeah, pediatric surgery fellowship. Um, so. Okay. Thank you, Bailey. I feel like I just chatter on for too long, and I know everyone learns differently, but I, will, I try to be more, con I'll try to be more concise. Let's say that. I have AmeriColor Gold. Yes, I feel like the AmeriColor Gold definitely does not make it look nice and gold. Um, let me check this oven out real fast and see where our Teflon is at in the baking process and then I'll get to gold macarons. Those are a little tricky. Okay, I'm gonna do two more minutes on those Teflon ones and then gold macarons. I feel like to get a gold shell, start with that gold Americolor 
and then do use some luster dust or something petal dust to um, dust all over with a with a nice brush. Like a, a fan brush or something. You don't have to use a fan brush, but just dust. Let me get some luster dust and I'll show you. So here is that Chef Rubber White. It's for macarons specifically. Sorry, the lighting makes it difficult to see, but this is super gold. It's hard to see. So it's a, it's a sterling pearl, super gold from the Sugar Art. Let me see if I can get it to show up in this lighting. But it's like a petal dust. Looks like I have it on my face right now because I'm sweating so much. Uh, but you just, use a tiny bit mix it in you can you can wet it with clear vanilla extract or, or lemon extract if you want or if you if you carry um, alcohol in your house with everclear i think it's called everclear vodka anyways you can mix it and make it super um thick and gold or i just like to do a dusting over it and it really emphasizes the gold that's underneath it and makes it look more like an actual gold instead of a tan. I start, Diana asked about my temperature of my oven. I start at 300 and then I drop it down to try to keep it around 300. So I drop it to 290. I used in my old oven, I would drop it to 275 in order to keep it around 290 300 yeah Veronica I feel like um, that will happen with if they cook Alexa stop if they cook too fast they're gonna rise really fast and then come collapse so you might want to turn your oven a little bit lower for you. I know 140 always already seems fairly low, but maybe try. Um, I'm all about experimenting one batch with 135 next time. And if that doesn't help, go a little lower, but it might've just been the too fast of a rise. Hi. Uh, let's see here. Okay, I'm gonna get this stuff out of the oven. So these are the Teflon. Let me get it to you guys. Much better than the silicone. So maybe the silicone mat does better with a air bake tray because last time I did the air bake tray and a silicone mat and it worked, it kept the shape and everything it was a little bit hollow on the inside but hey if I get a, a good looking macaron on the outside with silicone mat and Italian method I'm happy because I've had I've struggled so much um, Sherry thank you so much thank you <laughs> I've struggled so much with Italian and silicone mat for some reason um, this oven and the previous oven so the air bake tray and the silicone mat worked I'll try again sometime and get back to you guys and let you know. But the silicone tray and the French iron, the French steel pan I used today that's supposed to be a better conductor of heat just blew them up. So I don't recommend that combination. Uh, but you're, with my oven at least, your oven might. Uh, this Teflon was just a single sheet tray and it seems we'll have to see what's underneath them. Last time I did double sheet tray with my Teflon and it was a little concave on the bottom of your macarons. I don't know if you've ever gotten concave shells, but that happens to me when my heat conduction is too low. So I know that the double, 
the double sheet cherry was not helpful with the convex with the Teflon. Is this too much words? So Teflon worked way better with one single sheet tray the regular way up as well. They didn't crack, so I'm happy about that. So I didn't pipe too many on here, but they've got their feet. Let's check on the inside. I want to let them cool a tiny bit. Okay, so it came off clean. No concave shells this time, so that's good can't crack them very easily. Look, nice and full. So that's great. Try to, the lighting is terrible, I'm sorry guys. So this is good. Teflon seemed to work. Someone asked where I get my Teflon from. This specific one comes on Amazon with the blueprint one that I have. Now I'm sad that I used silicone for this one, but with this blueprint, it came with a silicone mat and a Teflon. So I only have one of those and I don't want to buy more of these. I like this. I like this a lot, but I just don't need more. But I would love more of those Teflon. So if anyone has a supplier of just the Teflon, let me know. Sorry, I'm blue in my teeth now. Okay. Let me see. Why do you use silicone mat often if it always seems to have? So because I use French method, someone asked why would I use silicone mat so much then? I don't have that problem with my French method recipe. Italian me method is not my preferred method, but that's what I'm testing out today with you guys. And that's where I get trouble with Italian method and silicone mats. That's so I don't have trouble with them usually. Okay, so I'm going to, right now in the oven, we just have the parchment in double tray to help rise evenly. I'm gonna move it down on the rack and I'm gonna put in the last upside down tray that's on a regular aluminum sheet pan on silicone mat. Someone asked if I've tried Zumbos. Is that how you say it? Zumbos? I know he's on Sugar Rush, but I don't know how to pronounce things. Zumbos or Zumbos? Either way, his Italian recipe, I have not. I have not tried that. French method sometimes has soft, fragile, wrinkly tops. So someone asked about wrinkly tops on French method, and someone did say that happens to them usually when their oven's too low. So that's one thing that can happen. Wrinkly tops or fragile tops can also be an indicator that your meringue is not very stable. You could have over whipped your meringue and um, it started to break down already and you couldn't even tell though because it was just a little bit over whipped. Or, which would help if you have egg white powder because egg white powder makes it very difficult to over whip your eggs. Or you could have, um, if it's cocoa powder, you could have too much cocoa in your recipe. Or with the meringue, if it's not over whipped, it could be under whipped and not sturdy enough. So the troubleshooting with macarons could be extremely uh, frustrating because you're like, well, I don't know if I did this or this, but I feel like with you knowing your meringue, you could probably tell maybe it was over whipped or not whipped enough. Thank you, is that Amy? No, let's see. 5995 Char, thank you so much for your donation. I very much appreciate it. You guys have been very generous today. Um, I'm excited that we are going to be able to keep doing more videos, especially the, the pistachio paste. Uh, I usually purchase pistachio paste, but right now, I don't know if it's because of COVID or what, but it's so expensive. So we're gonna learn how to make our own pistachio paste and I'm excited for that. Um, okay, I said a long time ago I was gonna check or put the other tray in.
Yes, it is so hard to find, right? You can find it on Amazon, but you're gonna pay $27 for six ounces, and that's just ridiculous. I don't know. I, I know for California, in the Central Valley, it has a producer there that makes up, I think, 85% of the pistachio production and ships out. I think worldwide, it's only like 60%, but in the United States, I think they supply over 80% of pistachios. So maybe they're trying to, they had to cut back workers or something. I don't know, it might be because of COVID, but I feel like the rise in the prices for pistachios has increased immensely right now. Okay, I keep forgetting about my... Let's see if Silicon Matte can redeem itself. Okay guys, it's in, last tray. Whew, sorry about this huge production today. Oh my goodness, the Teflon ones feel so heavy. You know how when you get just that perfect macronage and you just feel your macarons and you know they're nice and full inside? That's how they feel. They feel very nice. I'm trying to find a mate for this guy. Here we go. Look at how cute he is. He's got nice tall feet. The last time when I doubled my sheet tray with the Teflon, the feet were so small. So this is nice. They're nice and full in there. I'm happy. Okay, if it can't find egg white powder, what should I replace it with? Trang says cream of tartar, and that's a great thing to use. It doesn't, it doesn't do the same thing, but it is a stabilizer of your meringue and that's never a bad thing to have. What egg white powders do is you're adding protein without adding moisture and it's gonna make the whole structure of your meringue tighter when you add more protein. It's if you think of gluten, if you're making bread without gluten, it doesn't have that protein of the gluten. Um, and you're gonna get, it's hard to get a nice crumb because it's, it doesn't produce those, um, I don't even know, like molecules. This is me trying to do science. It's been a long time since exercise physiology and all those things. Um, either way, uh, protein will help your molecular structure of your meringue be tighter and more sturdy. So that's why I like to use egg white powder. However, cream of tartar will help stabilize it. It's an acid that helps stabilize your meringue and that is great too. Some people even use both, cream of tartar and egg white powder. I just haven't bought it at the store, so I don't put it in, but if I had it on hand, I feel like I would use it. Can you make macaron bars? Um, Burhan, Burhan said, can I make macaron bars? Thank you, Luz. Thank you, Amy. Oh, you guys are so awesome. Thank you so much for helping my channel out. Uh, you guys make it so fun, so it doesn't even phase me. You can probably hear my kids screaming outside though. But yes, put cream of tartar directly into your egg whites that are whipping because you want the actual meringue to be what's sturdier. If you are making egg white, if you're making Italian method, you could use mostly pasteurized carton eggs for the actual paste because that part you don't have to whip. Let me check these part, the parchment. But I was saying something before. Yes. Trying, you know it all, girl. Oh, macaron bars. So I've seen someone that does fudge. Some of my, some of my friends were showing me, um, I think it's like Jenna Ray's cakes or something. I think they're in Canada. But they make up with their messed up 
macarons, they put it into fudge. And I think that would be delicious. Okay, let me check out these things before I burn them. Okay, we're kind of flying at the seat of our pants because I didn't even put a timer on for the second tray I put in, but whatever. Okay, strand, when does where you put your tray in the oven. I put my tray in the oven, the very middle, um, I think, let me, because I have two trays now, I'm doing multiple macaron trays at once, so. Yeah, so the main one that I use is right straight dab in the middle, and then I might, need, I might wanna change that though, because I'm doing two at once, but I didn't expect to do two at once today. My second tray is down pretty low to the bottom. Um, so I can show you guys inside my oven next time I open it up. I'll bring you guys down there again. Again, let's see here. What do you use in the middle? Um, Luz, Luisa, are you asking what filling I use? If so, uh, you can use a variety of fillings in the middle. Today, I'm not going to fill. I'm just showing the shell aspect of the Italian macarons. But macarons can be filled with sorbet, ice cream, um, buttercreams, jams, marshmallow, fluff, uh, ganache, caramel. You can fill them with so many things. If they're a little bit more wet of a consistency, you just need to remember that it's gonna lower the shelf life. If you are doing, say a jam, um, your shelf life is going to be less because the moisture soaks into your macaron shell and makes it too soggy. It loses the nice crunch on the outside and chewy center after like three or four days. Yes, do and do, don't for filling. I have that on my list. And I also wanna do a composition, um, I think Trang asked, for all the different types of buttercreams. So um, just one shorter video of the different buttercreams and how they would taste in your macaron. So uh, Jen said that her macarons turned out concave. You used two trays, one with Teflon, one with Blue Drop. So both of those turned out concave. If so, you might need to raise the oven temperature. What temperature did you bake yours at, Jen? Can we add to our mix of flavor? Diana, are you asking like what things you can add into buttercreams or will you elaborate on that? Hi, Courtney, 300. Okay, that doesn't seem too low. Do you have an internal oven temperature that says it's 300 as well? It's really at 300? So Blen, I think, asked if putting trays on top of your macarons helps not brown. So you mean like a rack above, you put a tray in. I have had, I have heard of people, my friend Monique from Moe's Macarons does this and she swears by it. It keeps her macarons white if you're looking for white or not browning shells. Let me check out these parchment ones. Sorry guys. Oh, I said I would take you guys into the oven with me. Okay, so here we go. I'm checking these bad boys. I over baked my parchment last time, so I'm just a little nervous. I'll do one, one more minute. One more minute of those. Um, how I tell when they're done is I'll push down and if they give a little bit, you bake more. 
if they're nice and sturdy, you know that they're done. So those were giving a little bit. But last time I baked parchment, they gave a lot for a very long time. And then I ended up over baking them. So um, I'm trying to figure out if maybe it, the rule doesn't apply with parchment. Maybe it needs to be right before they're really nice and hard. Your oven temperature does not fluctuate. So, Layla, I, when I was doing the Italian method macarons, I put the egg white powder directly into my mixing egg whites and just kind of mixed them up in there. It gets a little lumpy. I suggest stopping your mixer after a second or two and then getting your whisk unattached and then kind of whisk it up again, just to break up the clumps. Um, you can also take out a little bit of sugar that was in your, before putting it into your sugar syrup, take a little bit of that sugar out and mix it with your egg whites and then put it into your eggs and that will help it not clump up. And that's what I was gonna show today, but I got sidetracked because I'm live. So let me take out these, these, what are they called? Macarons. <laughs> Guys, the, the uh, parch, no, the parchment looked good. The other silicone mat does not look good. It's getting, it was doing okay, and now it's starting to topple over a little bit. So, it might be, if you really want to use Italian method and silicone mats, but you are having trouble like me, I got very nice feet, perfect shaped uh, Italian macarons on Friday using air baked tray and a um, silicone mat. So you could try that if you have them on hand. My dogs are going crazy. Sorry. Um, and <laughs> gladly take all your failed attempts. <laughs> um, I don't know. Because of COVID, I feel like I can't sell any of this stuff. Especially because I haven't washed my hands while I'm doing this. I'm talking to you guys. I'm typing. I'm touching. These are just for my family. Um, I'm not practicing the safest sanitary um, sanitary methods right now. Um, but if I ever do make some and I have my mask on and everything, I'll let you. I'll let the locals know. Turn out concave. Um, Jen, you might need to bake your macarons longer then. Okay, let's check out parchment. So here's our parchment. Parchment come off very nicely. They're a little bit egg shaped. They're not as circular. Here's Teflon. Here's parchment Teflon. So a little misshaped on the, the silica, um, sorry, on the parchment. I ate too much of it. But full. Let me do another one and, and just snap it instead of biting it. It's my lunch. They're kind of soft right now. So, um, because it's so soft right now, 
what it looks like. Um, I'll, let me wait till they cool a little bit and then I'll re, I'll cut into it. Cut into, I mean, I'll break it, but they're full. They feel full. Uh, they're heavy, have some weight to it. Nice strong top. I just burnt myself. So Teflon parchment, both achieved some nice full shells. Um, silicone, we did not have success with today, which is unfortunate. But now we know, I, I never use my airbag trays because I had such concave shells whenever I would use them uh, because of the insulation that they have so you don't brown your cookies. But maybe that's the trick. Maybe you just need air bake. It seems counterintuitive because they're both poor conductors of heat. So I don't know, but they weren't full. So that's a big, a big downfall of the silicone mat. When they did come out in my other trials, they were not full like the Teflon and the parchment. Can you add flavor to the sugar syrup? Um, Sue, what kind of flavor are you talking about? A liquid flavor, um, like a vanilla extract, what kind of thing? You don't wanna add too much moisture. You could add, hmm, actually oils wouldn't be a good thing either because if you do an oil, it's going to um, not, it's gonna hurt your meringue. So not an oil-based flavoring. Extract is pretty runny. Or, um, Eni, do you use parchment that has a template? Uh, I don't have parchment that has a template, but I have seen them. I have it on my shop and um, someone bought them and said they love them. So they're brown, I think they're brown pieces of parchment and they have templates. So that's nice if you prefer parchment. If you don't get as full of shells, play around with how much you mix. It might just be um, mixing like two more strokes and then you might have it. So don't get too discouraged. I don't have full shells all the time. You guys have seen in my lives. Um, it's just not something that always happens with macarons and it doesn't bother me that much, but I know it's a big thing right now with the no hollow movement of macarons. Um, what bothers me is this ugliness. Like why, why only have a foot on one side? That's what bothers me, especially on a mat that I love so much and I usually have so much success on. So. Um, something that I want to play around with more is just trying silicone mats on the non air, I mean the air bake trays again. Okay, let's see. Ooh, an ice cream cone shape. That's really cool, Cookie Nims. You have to keep a journal for sure. Yes, Dora, best advice ever. Keep a journal, write your notes. Um, I had. I'm not like this most super organized person. I'm organized in my head, but someone else would come and see my notes and be like, what the heck? So to me, it's fine. Um, but I would have this running tally of all my notes and it was in like a little flip notebook. I suggest getting a big notebook cause you're gonna want to write a lot down and be detailed because you think you'll remember what you're talking about and then you look back a month later and you do not remember what that one note was that said more more this and you're like what more of what so be detailed silicone mat number two is so both of our silicone mats are bad I'm still stuck on the no hollow movement. <laughs> oh my gosh. The no hollow movement. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's, it's a big deal for, and it looks so beautiful and I get that. Um, but I just don't find it to be the number one. You want a lot of filling, that's for sure. But I don't mind air pockets. 
in my macarons. I feel like it makes it more delicate and delicious and like it was in France. You don't want it to be like a cake that like you're biting through. Do you, how do you get it to rise at the same level? When you're making, okay, macaron art. Um, I am trying, can you ask that again? I don't understand. So when I'm, when you're making macaron art, how do you get it to rise all the same? So if you're doing different shapes, how do I get it to rise? Like character macarons. Okay. So when, when you're doing character macarons, the thing you want to watch out for is when you're piping, you want it to kind of, when you're doing circles, you know how it flows over and makes the circle itself. You want to not inhibit the edge of your shell. I mean the edge of your piped batter. Cause when you, if you like, were, if you were piping, say I have these, this compilation of Halloween macarons, like a witch, a pumpkin with a witch's hat, right? On, on my channel. If you want to watch that, you can kind of see that I never drag the tip um, at any type of area where I want my foot to be, if that makes sense. So you want to make sure your tip is above the surface and make sure it's able to fall and spread and then hopefully your foot will be able to rise well and um, you just don't want to make any contact with where you pipe and the the mat i feel like i'm struggling with telling you this but so when you're doing macaron character macarons and they crack between the two different colors, that's probably because we're not resting them long enough. Character macarons, I rest way longer, and you're gonna have these areas that they are weak, per se. Like, you pipe your macaron hat, right? And then you pipe your pumpkin. This area where the, the hat and the pumpkin meet have this little divot that is going to stay moist for a while. So dry them longer and see if that helps. Um, you want all those areas to be dried completely before popping those into the oven. Our last tray, some of them turned out nicely and most are lopsided. So there's like one, two, three, four, five five that turned out well and the rest are lopsided which bothers me to no end which method is best for character macarons i mean i prefer french over everything but i hear italian is better because it will last like if you take a long time to pipe it um then if they the batter could start breaking down and then you're gonna get cracks also in your macarons. If you take too long to form your shapes, start easy shapes, start with easy shapes um, so you're not taking too long because your batter does break down with French. If you wanna do Italian macarons, I, I know that Indulge, let's see, Gour Indulge Gourmet Trini, um, I'm trying to think of Engorge, indulge gourmet desserts i think is her name on instagram trini does italian method and she has awesome character macarons let's see here bye jen thanks for thanks for joining why so blue i know these macarons are so blue and beautiful right i'll take pictures the lighting doesn't really show them to the how pretty they are. Uh, I try not to pipe them at an angle. I think this is, cause these ones didn't turn out um, lopsided. So I think it was more the surface than the actual piping. 
Will I be adding a Halloween Mac? I can definitely do a Halloween Mac tutorial closer to um, Halloween if you guys want. That'll be fun. Um, I love seeing all these shapes. The ice cream ones are awesome. Can't wait to see them. Cookie nibs. You don't. You said you don't have an Instagram, right? I don't know where to see your your beautiful creations. Hi, sis. Can you do a video on packaging? Um, I could definitely say more details on packaging. I feel like I don't have all the equipment anymore because I'm not selling my macarons. But if you want just details on who was my supplier and labels and how to make those look nice, then I could definitely look, do that and add it to my business um, series of vlogs that I have not finished yet. Me too. I love baking my therapy as well. Okay, friends, let's see. Couple more questions. Yes, please on Halloween, Max. Perfect, we will do that closer to Halloween. I can't believe it's already August, to be honest. Um, maybe end of September so you guys have time to practice those. We can do a live on making pumpkins or something fun like that. T. Morrison asked if I find there is fading that occurs when I am uh, baking, so fading of color. And I don't feel there is too much fading with the sugar art. I don't feel like there's too much fading with a mara color. Certain colors do, like purple. I feel like it does. But there are certain colors that are typical of fading, and that's purple or violet and black. But other than that, I don't feel like I get too much fading in the color. Pistachio, so Sue, I'm not gonna do a pistachio live. I'm gonna do a video for that. And as soon as I get my almond flour in the mail, it's on its way, I will make the video for that and edit it and then it'll be nice and concise for you guys to, to watch. Thank you, Terry. Thank you so much for watching you guys. Bye Bailey, thanks for tuning in. Which brand of Teflon? So the Teflon I used, let me get my, my Max off. The Teflon I used, I got two sticky on, um, is this brown looking thing and it came with my Blue Drop, Blue Drop Mat. It's on Amazon and they come in a, a little kit. So um, I have not found just the Blue Drop Mat. I mean, sorry, just the Teflon, it comes with both. But um, I like the Blue Drop Mat usually, it just didn't perform very well today with my batch of macarons. So I think we're probably good. Let's see here. All in all, I'm, I think Teflon and parchment were beautiful for this. Um, I think in my first experiment with this, when my, even when my silicone mat did perform well, it, they weren't full. So Teflon, silicone, I mean, te Teflon and parchment were the winners, winners. Um, French method, I will still stick with my silicone mat and I'm gonna try to figure out how to make my silicone mats work because I love them dearly. But I really just love that fullness from its fullness without being crunchy and overbaked. So it's like my favorite from the Teflon and the parchment. Okay, let's see. You get Teflon, yes. So some Teflon, will be, if you have like copper Teflon, this feels like plastic still. Um, I also have, I think it was a barbecue grill, like Teflon mat that I got and it's copper based. And that tends to give me crumbly feet as well. You wanna find something a little bit more 
plasticky feeling, even though that sounds awful to bake with plastic, but kind of like silicone. It mimics that, but it's supposed to be better at conducting heat. Add violet to my white to cancel out yellow, which works. Um, yeah, I, I wish I could read your guys' comments. I love your guys' camaraderie and helping each other out in the comments. It's my favorite part about this. Again, thank you so much for the donations and for keeping this channel going. I cannot wait to actually get that pistachio one out to you guys. The video will be a pistachio paste and I'm also going to, I don't usually do pistachio flour in my macarons for selling because it upped the price and per unit my pistachio on my menu was already the most expensive one. So I used to not add pistachio flour into my macarons when selling but I'm going to create a recipe that we can add that if you want that extra pack of punch of pistachio. Um, so we'll do that. If you don't, you can just use my regular French method shells and then put the filling in that we will go over and I'm excited. Experimenting is my favorite thing. We're gonna do a happy dance. I'm so hot. So we're just gonna like shake it like this and we're gonna say goodbye. <laughs> Again, I'm so sorry about the title and the car having to leave for a second. That was my bad. Completely forgot to sign the title. Okay, good night, Cookie Knit. Oh wait, that's, you're saying good night to someone else. Awesomeness, can't wait to try next week. Good luck trying. Master of macarons. I feel like I can't be a master if my my stinking silicone matte shells did not turn out this time, but hopefully I can redeem myself. Um, next live will be French recipe Swiss method. We'll try that out. <laughs> Thank you, Cookie Nips. <laughs> um, always a pleasure. Kathleen, I'm sorry. You might need to mix more, especially if you added the egg white powder. Um, you can mix even more than you would think and hopefully that will help rise evenly and not crack. Teflon mats make yours very dry. Hmm. Uh, you might need to lower your oven temperature if that's the case, Samantha. Bye, Terry. Happy birthday to Wes. Thank you, Trang. Why are you filling them? I am not gonna fill these today. I will um, just have us duck out. So no, no filling today. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna fill them with eventually. I have a lot of shells in my freezer right now because of my previous uh, test batch with the Italian macaron. So I got yellow and blue. It's gonna look like a sunshiny day and I'll figure out what to fill those with. Um, yeah, Tommy, Dan, did, were you going to say where you can buy them? Okay. Bubble gum or cream cheese frosting. So with bubble, with cream cheese frosting I just did, and you can check that recipe out on the Red Velvet Macaron Live that we did last week, I think. Um, and then bubble gum would be fun. I don't have a lot of artificial flavoring, but I did just order some Pog, you know, Pog juice, um, Pog artisan flavors from ooh, Amoretti. I'm excited for that because Pog juice is usually pretty tart and I think it will go well with our macaron shells. So that recipe will hopefully come out too as well for some more of your, our filling recipes that we want to roll out. Okay, bye guys. I could keep reading and going back and then you'd be on here forever. So I will say goodbye for now. Does Wes answer his DMs? Um, he's super busy at work, so I'm not sure if he would. 
but if he has time, he, I'm sure he would check them out. And I can tell him to check them out too on his birthday. So um, if you're gonna DM him, I'll say, look in your DMs. But um, yes, Pog is so good, right? It's one of my favorite juices. Yo-Yo va Van, <laughs> just see that, okay, don't worry. You can rewatch it, but I did shout you out and thank you in the very beginning for donating to the channel um, because I was able to get some really choice ingredients that I'm excited to share and new videos about fillings. Indonesia, hello from Indonesia. Well, I'm ending it now, but you guys can definitely rewind and watch back. Much love to you guys. Thank you. Bye. Lots of love to you as well. Bye, everyone.